Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk about languages and see how digital tools could help ensure language equality and preserve language diversity in Europe and the world. Alors, restez avec nous. Have you ever heard of Livonian, Yurok, Olmec? Almost 7,000 languages are currently spoken in the world, but every two weeks, at least one dies out. Yes, the world's languages are in crisis, and 50 to 90% of them are predicted to disappear by the end of the 21st century. So what is causing all these languages to disappear, and how can we prevent it? The world's languages are divided into three main families, Indo-European, Sino-Tibetan, and Afro-Asiatic. 90% of European citizens are native speakers of an Indo-European language pertaining to one of the three main language groups, that is, Germanic, Romantic, and Slavic. But there are also minority Indo-European language groups in the EU, such as Baltic, Celtic, and Romani. And they coexist with other less spoken non-Indo-European languages, such as Basque, Estonian, Hungarian, or Maltese. Truth is, language is a product of history, politics, and socio-economics. By 1920, and after centuries of European colonization, half of the world's languages had been lost, and the situation in Europe was no better. No, it wasn't. As centralized governments in Spain, France, or British-ruled Ireland imposed a dominant language in order to preserve national identity and counter the threat of fragmentation, minority languages such as Basque, Breton, Occitan, or Catalan were suppressed, even submitted to persecution. It was only towards the 1970s that national governments began to recognize the importance of language diversity and protect them. Since then, several member states have integrated minority languages in school curricula and enshrined language rights in national constitutions. There's no doubt language diversity is at the centre of the European project and it's protected by the EU's Charter of Fundamental Rights. You know how many official languages the EU counts today? 24. All official languages at the European Parliament – and many others, such as Catalan, Galician, Scottish Gaelic and Welsh, have semi-official status. So how does the EU promote linguistic diversity? Well, to begin with, the EU invests about 1 billion euros per year in translation and interpretation services to ensure multilingualism within the EU institutions and communicate with citizens in their own languages. Language learning and mobility are also promoted through Erasmus Plus and Creative Europe programs. And the goal is a Europe where young people speak at least two languages in addition to their own mother tongue by 2025. But despite these efforts, language diversity is under threat from globalization, social and economic pressures, and the dominance of English as the world's largest lingua franca. However, a study conducted by the European Parliament's Scientific Foresight Unit pointed at a rather new threat. Luisa Antunc has all the details. The SOA study found that linguistic diversity online is threatened not by the dominance of a single language like English, but actually by the dominance of machine translation in the five most spoken EU languages, which is English, French, German, Spanish and Italian to the detriment of the remaining 19 official ones. But in fact, digital tools can also help overcome language barriers and foster language equality. Based on the results of a 2017 STOA study, in 2018, the Parliament adopted a resolution to achieve language equality in the digital age. This led to the creation of the European Language Equality Project, which analysed over 80 languages to develop a roadmap towards achieving full digital language equality by 2030. The results of this project will be presented in a STOA event taking place on the 8th of November. The Parliament has also set into motion several language technology initiatives. Although digital tools to translate sign language to or from text are still underdeveloped, so here's a challenge for the future. Want to know more? Check out Luisa Antunch's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening. 
Gracias por la seva atención. Díky za poslech. Paltes por clausíšenos. Thank you.